In 2014, CD Projekt Red was a name few knew, let alone had even heard of. The Polish developer slash publisher only had two games and a mobile app under their belt, and had a small but ambitious PC storefront in GOG. It wasn't until 2015 that CD Projekt Red would become a household name and would release one of the most discussed games of the 8th console generation. It's the truth. Know why? No, but I guess you're about to tell me. In 2015, CDPR released The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Based off Andrzej Sapkowski's best-selling fantasy novels, The Witcher 3's launch was met with glowing reviews and received many Game of the Year awards. It currently has an aggregate score of 92 on Metacritic and accumulated nearly perfect scores from numerous outlets. It cannot be understated just how much success this game has seen in its five years on the market. Since the launch of Wild Hunt, CDPR has seen exponential growth, and their soon-to-be-released FPS-slash-RPG Cyberpunk 2077 has some of the largest interest surrounding a video game we've seen in quite some time. The success of The Witcher 3 even led to Netflix adapting the novels into a TV series, as much as Sapkowski would love to say it had no effect, and it stars Henry Cavill as the lead man. The show was a massive hit and led to the game seeing a resurgence in popularity, breaking numerous records and skyrocketing CDPR as the biggest video game publisher in Europe. There would be almost no other developer more deserving either, as the publisher's dedication to its customer-first philosophy has garnered them immense positive support from gaming media. A testament to just how long-lasting The Witcher 3's impact has been can be seen anytime you go online. Pictures of the game's protagonist and hero, Geralt of Rivia, a cat-eyed mutant human, constantly flood my Instagram feed and I can't spend a minute scrolling through Twitter without seeing conversations about the game and TV show. So with the mass amount of praise and accolades, does this RPG live up to the high expectations the gaming community has set for it? I thought you bowed before no man. Didn't want to disappoint the Chamberlain. We're friends. I started my journey with Geralt back in late 2019, just on the cusp of Netflix's TV series being released. The complete edition of the game was discounted for $15 on the GOG launcher, and I did not hesitate to add it to my library. Upon the first time launching the game, I was thrown into a tutorial where I met some of the game's main characters and familiarized myself with the gameplay. Initially, I wasn't particularly impressed, other than some gorgeous scenery, but after a few hours in, it was becoming easier to see why the game is so renowned, as it showcases quality game design, a great set of quests and characters, and a beautifully realized art direction. The first thing you'll notice during your initial gameplay is the amount of detail the devs put into every corner of this game, and its world. The opening sequence has you take over Geralt in his room where you're introduced to his Witcher senses, a heightening of the senses that all mutant Witchers like him possess. This is your typical current gaming trend that many games have been using to assist players. However, this one is a little different. Where most games that provide you with these sensory gifts feel more like crutches and hand-holding, this ability makes a lot more sense in the context of Geralt's story. The sense allows you to pick up on clues left behind like the smell of a toxic mushroom planted in a barrel of mead, or the scent of a monster that just passed through just before you got there. While this is a nice change, it does suffer from a lot of the pitfalls other games do, with a lot of your time using the senses tied to tracking footsteps or following a trail of blood. That being said, it still fits into the narrative a hell of a lot better than most games that just lazily toss this mechanic in. After the brief time spent in Geralt's quarters, you're led to check up on his adopted daughter, Ciri. The both of you head to the training grounds where you're introduced to the game's robust combat system. The tutorial focuses only on the basics with your typical heavy and regular attacks, counters, dodges, parries, and magic casting. The controls feel tight and the game has a great sound design that provides gratifying feedback when each swing of your sword connects. After finishing, Geralt awakens from his tutorial disguised as a dream and we find he's actually searching for Ciri as the two have been separated. You get a second but brief combat lesson that introduces you to Geralt's signature two swords, Steel for Humans and Silver for Monsters. 
After this, follow Vesemir and now you're finally dropped into the game world where you can get a taste of what the full combat system has to offer. An early and memorable experience for me was one of the first monster contracts that I did, asking me to slay a so-called Devil by the Well. The quest has you using your Witcher senses to uncover clues on the monster and then encourages you to read up on this type of beast so you can plan for it accordingly. Looking in the bestiary, I found my current target was actually a Noon Wraith, which it exposes to be weak to Wraith Oil and Yurden, a spell that cast a magic trap. I brewed up the Wraith Oil using ingredients found in the wild and proceeded to soak my blade in it. The fight was intense, and seeing the effects of the magic trap and the blade oil combined was both rewarding and satisfying. It was clear the devs put a lot of time and effort into the combat system, and I really enjoyed the depth that you could go into for each fight. Unfortunately, this is where one of my biggest complaints about the game rears its head. The combat system is great, but the enemies never really try to throw you off and challenge you nearly as much as they should. After this encounter, I rarely found myself using blade oils or even researching my next target. Almost all of the enemies can be defeated by just using your sword and the fire spell Igni. I would have liked to see my contracts require me to have the same methodical planning I so meticulously studied for my first contract. The combat rarely forced me to break this cycle of fire spell, dodge, attack, dodge, repeat. And that's not to say, of course, that the basic combat isn't still fun or gratifying. Trust me, it is. But with such a deep system that rewards the player for discipline and knowledge, it would have been nice to see it utilized and required more frequently. Mm -hmm. Probably mastered the basics, though. Hands up. Kill them. No. First came idioms. Don't play with fire, for example. As is true with any open world game, the world can make or break the experience. The Witcher 3's The Continent is a diverse land that has you traveling to the forest, swamps, and cities of Velen to the snow-capped isles of Skellige. The front end of the game's story is spent in Velen's farmland and forest, which, truthfully, begins to get boring and drab rather quickly. A lot of your early gameplay is spent slaying the same few monsters over and over again, and visiting the grimy and depressing rural villages to sharpen your fighting style and learn the ropes, and honestly, it becomes quite mundane. Thankfully though, once you get to later locales like the mass city of Novigrad, the game becomes much less tedious and far more intriguing and colorful. The characters in these locations do a much better job to immerse you into the world than the landscape itself. Geralt interacts with a great cast of individuals like his current love interest, Yennefer, his old flame Triss, a wise-cracking dwarf named Zoltan, and his trusty friend, the bard, Dandelion. And that's just to name a few. These characters are vital to providing Geralt with information on where to find Ciri, but of course nothing is free and it's the missions these people send you on that really encapsulate what I love most about the game. I missed those awkward compliments of yours. But let's focus on Ciri, alright? Geralt's main quest sees him trying to track down his missing daughter Ciri, who is being stalked by the Wild Hunt, a group of otherworldly warriors who are after her to harness her powers. He constantly seems to just be a step behind, and while this story is certainly interesting, it's actually the plethora of side quests along the way that always had me wanting more. The game's best moments are when you're being asked to help out a local villager or accept a monster contract. Solving the mysteries surrounding many of these monsters was fascinating, and it always had me going back to a town's notice boards to see who needed my help next. Something as simple as fetching a frying pan for an old woman was made interesting as I uncovered clues on why a young soldier never brought it back to her after borrowing it. The compelling side quest gave me a strong nostalgia for my 80 plus hours spent in Skyrim, and much like Bethesda's classic, The Witcher 3's world demands to be uncovered. My only real gripe here is that the locations seem to be more individual and separated when you compare it to the likes of, for example, Breath of the Wild, a game which flows from one area to the next so seamlessly I'd often explore until I forgot what I was even doing in the first place. But that's really just nitpicking, because the continent is every bit worth exploring and turning inside out to reveal all of its secrets. Get out, all of you. We ain't going nowhere. And neither are you. They won't back down now. I can see that. The world of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is beautifully depicted and has a wonderfully realized art direction. The characters are carefully rendered with some of the sharpest textures and 3D models I've ever seen in a game. 
God rays and fog spruce up the atmosphere of Geralt's adventure with some gorgeous lighting on sunsets, sure to make you second guess if it's even worth going outside to see a real one. Visually, Wild Hunt seems quite advanced for a game pushing 5 years old, and put even my current rig to the test. Rundown and abandoned areas feel grimy and unpleasant, while rich city districts are lush and full of color. Forest trees sway with the stormy winds, and I often find myself in awe, just staring at the breathtaking landscapes. The monsters are gruesome and look as horrid and putrid as you might expect them to. Ghouls and drowners are nasty and vile, and wraiths still chill me to the bone every time I cross one of their paths. Geralt's swordplay is also visually enhanced by the Witcher's wonderful dismembering mechanic, which is gory and unapologetic. CD Projekt Red refused to hold back with Wild Hunt's visuals, and it's sure to please even the biggest of graphics snobs. Fascinating story. Any chance you're nearing the end? The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is a game that is still unrivaled in its delivery and shouldn't be skipped over. It is unquestionably one of the best experiences of this past generation that excels at unparalleled storytelling, amazing visuals, and an enthralling open world. While it has its downfalls, like a combat system that doesn't challenge you nearly enough, CD Projekt Red hit it out of the park with this title and this is sure to be one that gamers will be talking about for console generations to come. So, I think it's safe to say that CDPR's third Witcher game definitely lives up to the hype. I have more than enjoyed my 100 plus hours of exploring the continent, slaying monsters. But what about you? Let me know in the comments below what your favorite monster contract was, and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notifications every single time I upload. With that, I have been the name's Jer. Thanks for watching. See you later!